morning guys, welcome back to another video. Now that the uh, coffee's made, no it's not a coffee making video, we are brewing the Hefeweizen today. So that's it, that's it. Oh, I, don't think you, I don't think you can brew it without coffee. Um, so, yeah, um, let's get stuck into this, um, this recipe. I milled the grains already last night. We got um, 2.421 kilograms of Pilsner malt, and the same quantity, 2.421 kilograms of wheat malt, um, 275 grams of carapils, 275 grams of Munich 1, and 150 grams of um, acidulated malt, just to bring my pH down a little bit. And we're gonna mash in at 69 degrees. Um, the last time I brewed this recipe, um, we mashed at 67 and um, I think the body could have just been a little bit fuller, so up that a bit today, and um, let's see how it turns out. Um, I've also switched out one of the hops, so the first wort hop addition in this recipe is um, now going to be Denali, and that's also um, going to be in the Whirlpool. Uh, and the reason for that is that my other Whirlpool hop is Lemon Drop, and I found that gave a really nice sort of citrusy. Um, character to the Hefeweizen, like um, similar to when you put a slice of orange or a slice of lemon uh, in um, in a vice beer, which is uh, I think quite common in the States, um, and I quite like that, uh, and, the, and the sort of citrusy notes from the lemon drop um, really brought out that flavor, and I just want to accentuate that a little bit more, so um, yeah, the Denali should give us some uh, some more citrusy character uh, along with some tropical fruits. So let's go and get uh, get um, dowed in. Um, the the water is already up to temperature. Um, I put it on the delayed uh, timer last night, so we're up at 69 degrees already. Um, and I've also thrown in some calcium chloride and some gypsum um, already. But I'll share the water profile with you guys um, in the description below. See you next So, now you can see we were looking for 5.0, oh, well it's just crept up to 5.5, but it was uh, it was showing, five, it's hovering between 5.4 and 5.5. Um, I was looking for 5.4 roughly, so um, you can see it's 5.3. I don't trust this pH meter massively, but it's pretty much hovering between 5.3 and 5.5. Not gonna add any lactic acid, gonna leave it at that, um, and yeah, you can see that nice colour there, a bit of orangey golden hue there coming from the Munich malt, so that's working nicely. And yeah, I think we're going to call it, we'll call it 5.3, which is uh, which is good, which is what we were looking for. Perfect. So we've got about 15 minutes left of the mash. Um, my spider water's just uh, finished heating up. Um, and I just wanted to chat a little bit more about why I wanted to brew this Hefeweizen. 
um, because for those of you guys that know me, um, probably know that I'm not the biggest fan of um, Vice beers, but that was kind of um, uh, like rejuvenated a little bit um, about a year ago when we had a visit up to Mad Giant in, um, in Joburg. Um, my wife was uh, drinking their Vice beer and um, I had a sip and uh, I realized that I do quite like Vice beer still. Um, it was a style that I liked quite early on in the discovery of um, craft beer and I kind of went off it and I think um, I think I was just gonna have a few bad ones um, or not necessarily bad ones but ones that um, that weren't uh, to my taste. Um, I really like a, a Vice beer sort of on the, the high end of the banana-y, um, bubblegummy um, kind of aromas and, and flavors. So that's definitely what I'm gonna be aiming for today. And um, the other reason I decided to brew it is because I have some uh, WBO6 in the fridge. And we are now on day three of lockdown here in Cape Town, in South Africa. Um, and um, the last time I brewed with this yeast, it fermented out in like three days, like vague kind of uh, yeast style um, territory. So I'm gonna be pushing this um, on the higher end of the temperature. Um, it's, uh, it says ideally between 18 and 24. We're gonna try and aim for a sort of medium of 23 and a half. So I'm getting low on beer and um, if this can ferment out quite quickly and we can have a nice fresh uh, Hefeweizen in the in the fridge on, on tap here, then, um, then I'll be, be very happy. So we're going to pitch just one sachet this time as well of WB06. Last time I pitched two, um, but I really want to stress that yeast out. Probably not going to aerate the wort too much either, maybe, maybe just a little bit from, from the transfer, but um, I don't think I'm going to force aerate it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna really try and push it up to that bubblegummy, banana-y uh, character that um, that I really like in a, in a Hefeweizen. And then I think with those citrusy hops, to balance that out, it could, uh, it could be really nice, but we'll see. So I almost forgot there, but we have a um, first word hop edition on this one, um, which uh, is six and a half grams of these Denali hops. Um, I'm gonna get them weighed out now. Well, oh, they smell good, eh? They smell like, mm, they smell like proper fresh citrus. I think these are gonna be nice. So six and a half grams, I'm gonna do on my little water scale because it's such a small amount. Perfect. Um, the reason, well, the reason it's such a small amount here is because these um, these Denali hops are 14% um, half acid, and the last time I brewed this beer, I used some more traditional German Halatar hops um, in this edition, um, but yeah, I decided to to use the citrus ones as I mentioned before this time. I'm just gonna measure out my, my salt here while we're um, while we're chatting. So I need 1.2 grams of um, sodium chloride. Just normal salt. Doesn't have to be sea salt, but it has to be non-iodated because that's not gonna be too good for your yeast. There you go, so I'm gonna throw all of that in. Um, just when uh, we start the sparge as a as a first word edition. So, so that is a mash finished and we're now bringing the temperature up to 75 degrees for a 10 minute mash out. All right guys, so that is the mash out finished. Let's get rid of the recirc on. Open it off. And lift this out. There we go, and also, let's throw in our hops and a water chemistry addition, so maybe I can just 
slide it in there quickly. Perfect. Correct. Pull in. Okay, so let's get started with the sparge. I do get the impression that this is going to be a particularly slow sparge compared to normal. Um, oh, it's now 20 to 10, so let's um, let's time it. It's only 12 and a half liters of water, so maybe not too long. But um, the grain bull is 50% wheat, um, and the crush was particularly. It seemed like a bit finer than normal. So as I was saying, yeah, I normally use Simpson's Welt, um, Golden Promise, and this is Weimann's Pilsner Malt. And I have noticed the difference in the grain size between Simpson's and Weimann's. Like, like visually, if you look at them, <coughs> the um, the Simpson's Malt is a bit of a smaller grain than the Weimann's. So. Yeah, perhaps uh, with the grain being slightly bigger here, my crush was um, was a bit too fine for the pills and malt, but we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. Here we are with the last litre and a half of um, sparge water, and the time is just coming up to 10 o'clock, so yeah, 20 minutes. Not too bad at all, actually. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than that. That's... Um, it's maybe slightly slower than my normal sparge time, considering this is only 12 and a half liters of uh, sparge water. But um, yeah, 20 minutes, it's flowed through really nicely. Um, probably at a pretty good sort of speed. Um, so I reckon the efficiency on this brew is probably gonna be quite high. Um, and uh, I'd already calculated the recipe at 5.8%. ABV because I was expecting the final gravity to be slightly higher than what the uh, the software says just based on on last time. So um, I was hoping for more of a five to five and a half percent beer, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, see what numbers we get. So here we are coming up to the boil. Well, we've come up to the boil, I should say. It's going to stir in. All of that protein on the top, so that it drops back into the beer. <laughs> Sorry, you're getting a bit steamed up there. It's smelling fantastic already from those first wort hops that went in there. Just gonna give that bottom plate a bit of a scrape while we're in here. Uh, I don't want any of that protein catching on the bottom. So, start the timer. There we go. So it's a 30 minute boil on this one. Um, yeah, we'll come back um, in a little bit. Okay, so we've um, 15 minutes left to go in the boil. I paused the timer here and I just want to recirc through the counterfoil chiller some boiling hot wort. Okay, so that's recirc around now for a couple minutes and um, Temperature's dropped to 98 in the kettle, so before I resume the timer, I'm just gonna wait for that to come back up to the boil. And uh, yeah, it's already back up to 99, not gonna take very long. And then I'll resume the timer and we'll carry on. So as you can see, there we are back up to the boil. So let me resume the timer. And we've got 15 minutes left now, so um, I'll be back again with the next step. Okay, so with 10 minutes to go, um, this is a step that I'm not sure if I should be doing or not um, because I wanted to stress the yeast out. Um, I'm not sure that adding yeast nutrients uh, is the right call, but I'm going to add a really small amount, just a little sort of third of a teaspoon anyway, and give it a bit of a stir in. And I've been periodically stirring the uh, foam put back in during the boil as it forms on the top as well and also we've been given the bottom plate a bit of a scrape just to stop any scorching and you can feel like the stuff starting to catch on it uh, even in this short boil time so definitely worth while doing and then also with like 10, nine minutes left now, 
um, um, because we're going to be doing a whirlpool, I'm just going to put my whirlpool attachment in the kettle um, because I'm going to be dropping the temperature down to 80 degrees for the whirlpool or just shy of 80, just sub 80. Um, I just want to give it a, a bit of a uh, contact time in the boiling hot wort there so just uh, for the last 10 minutes I'm gonna leave it in there just to just to sterilize it okay just while that's um, coming to the end of the boil I'm gonna weigh out my whirlpool hop additions so we have lemon drop here 30 grams help if we turn the scale grams of lemon drop and another 17 grams of Denali. Let's tear that. There we are. As this is chilling down to 80, what I tend to find is that on the gauge it says it's at now it's at 82 but all the cold water all the cold work sorry drops to the bottom so if we actually give this a stir while it's recirking temperature is already back up to 84 85. We wouldn't have wanted to add our hops then because now it's 86 and I want it to be sub 80. So let's give it a little bit longer to recirc. I'll give it another stir and then we can throw our hops in. Okay, so my temperature gauge is reading 78 now, which would be quite nice, but let's give it a stir. That's not shooting up too badly. So, it's 78, I'm gonna turn the pump off, and the water off, and then we're back to add the hops. So we are at 79. There's our Whirlpool hop edition that we just weighed out. Add them in. And start the timer. We're gonna do a five minute Whirlpool and a 15 minute stand. Okay, so that was a five minute whirlpool. I'm gonna pop the lid on so no little bugs get in there. And I'm gonna just spray down my recircle arm. I'm just gonna place that in the, um, in the grandfather just so that it stays uh, sanitary. Okay, so there we are, that is the end of the hop stand. I'm just recircling to see what the temperature drops down to. Okay, it's probably not going to be much lower than that, so I'm just going to steal a little sample here to do a gravity reading and then switch off the pump. Put that into my fermenter like that. There. Perfect. And then turn the pump back on. And we are transferring. Awesome. So, yeah, it's transferring at about 28 degrees C. Um, just using the Blickman thermometer there to check that. 28 degrees C, I want to pitch at 24 really. So I'm probably gonna have to cool in the fermenter a couple of degrees before we um, 
before you push the yeast but I can't do much about that the groundwater temperature in Cape Town is just not cold enough to um, to get the water to get the work down to pitching temp okay so that sample is at uh, 26 my hydrometer is calibrated at 20 but we can use a calculator just to adjust it it's not going to make a massive amount of difference Yeah, as I expected. It's going to be slightly stronger than I wanted, <laughs> but I suppose that's okay. So that's reading, oh, I'd say 10.59 maybe, and using the calculator, 10.59 at 26 degrees is 1060 so yeah opening gravity of 1060 on this one and we were aiming for um 1054 so yeah it's gonna be a big hefeweizen imperial hefeweizen maybe okay so just checking for the last bits of wort to transfer um okay and there we are it's done so i'm gonna stop the pump and I'm going to cool the work down in the fermenter. So let's hook it up. So let's glycol in. Warm glycol out. Pop on the temperature controller. Turn the power on. Let's see what we're at. Yeah, so it's at 29. I'm going to set it down to 24. My reservoir is at 1.3 degrees. So, yeah, it shouldn't take too long to, to drop to 24. So we'll come back for the pitching in a minute. And you can see that the Whirlpool does its job. There's a nice cone of there. So the temperature is down to 23, 22.9. Um, it's 12 o'clock, so I started brewing at um, just after 8, I think like 20 past 8. Um, so three and a half hours, two hours, 40 minutes. Um, not too bad of a brew day at all. Um, and I decided to drop the temperature now to 23 instead of 24. The reason being is that ambient is relatively warm here and I figure that um, it's going to ferment. It's going to warm up to 23, and then be brought down to 20. Sorry, warm up to 23 and a half, and then be brought down to 23, and then warm up to 23 and a half. So it's going to hover like, you know, in the middle of that uh, probably 23.25 will be the the median sort of temperature. So decided to go with that. I think, I think if you were in a um, colder climate and you were trying to bring the temperature up all the time, then um, maybe pitch at 24 and let it hover around that 23 and a half, 23.75 sort of, uh, sort of mark. So, sanitize our hands. Spray that on. Got the scissors, they're in the sanitizer here as well. So I've sanitized the The yeast and the scissors. Let's keep this off. Okay, there goes. Let's get a scrub in the same. This is spray. Grab a spray. There we go.
But yeah, yeast is pitched just after 12 o'clock, five minutes past 12. Um, and I've already started cleaning. Um, so I'm going to continue with my cleaning process now. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, we will follow up in the next video with some tasting notes on this, um, as well as a bit of um, a run by on the fermentation stage. I want to see how fast this one ferments at this time, so I will bring you along for that process as well. Cheers guys, thanks for watching, see you next time.